Video games are an interactive medium that has existed for over 60 years. Its sole purpose is for us consumers to play through an alternate, virtual or fictional reality, however you like to describe it, and not have to think about the world or your own problems for a period of time. It can also be described as killing time while waiting for your wife to come home, waiting for food to be delivered to your step, playing with your friends, or just simply having a good time. Every now and then when we play video games, we get so immersed into a game mode that you realize that time flies and before you know it, you've been playing Elder Ring since 9 in the morning. It's 7 p.m. now. Time is one of these indicators amongst many others that you yourself are getting lost into that specific world, whatever it may be, and it's things like these that give games such bad credit from media outlets all over the world, as games are to be viewed negatively as a bad habit and a waste of time. But we never think about how or why we lose ourselves so much in these worlds or why we put so many hours into even something as short as a game that makes you kill anyone like Undertale or being a fire lookout in Firewatch. Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and today, I'm going to be diving into what makes us get lost in video games and how these little factors play a part in shaping modern gaming as of today. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and notifications turn off for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? The idea for this video came from a Reddit post on the gaming subreddit titled, Why can't I just get lost in a video game anymore? He briefly mentions recently picking up Immortals Phoenix Rising and being prompted with a bunch of options, all coinciding with completing one mission while also mentioning newer games like Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, giving puzzle hints that ruin the immersion, joy and satisfaction of solving a puzzle. So much so that even Sunny Soljic, the actor for Atreus, did not like hearing himself giving hints to big man Christopher Judge or Kratos for sure. Is it fun having you giving the answers to the puzzles? What if you use your axe on it? I think we need to get that wheel moving. If you freeze the geyser, the pressure will turn the wheel. Actually, for me, no, because I'm trying to do the puzzles and I hear myself giving myself like the hints and I just, I get so sick of hearing my voice sometimes. I love the idea that you're on the sofa saying like, I wish this guy would shut up. Oh dude, it, it's so frustrating, but I mean, it is what it is. It's been over a year now, and even with all the great accessibility features Ragnarok has, they still haven't added an option to turn these off. He ends with a final note of modern games either taking you out of the game due to such settings, or selling you some kind of currency, aka microtransactions. It closes up with the question of whether or not he's too old for these newer games. Video games are and have always been about sinking hours and hours into a game and not having to think about these other mechanics or business practices that they implement in order to further consume your time. Age definitely does play a factor in this as well because as we age, we not only mature but we learn more about ourselves, the world around us and gain more knowledge about the things we consume, albeit water and food to name essentials or in this case, mediums. We watch TV shows and movies to sink ourselves into the genre that it's aiming for, comedy to make us laugh, horror to make us scared, action to get our hearts pumping. We read books to picture visual scenarios from the book that we're reading but to also sink our time into romance to make us feel loved or relate, biographies to get us inspired and learn about the lives of the ones we read about, and fantasy to take a spin on the real world and set it in a different time period. These genres can be applied to any medium really, not just one. Growing up as a gamer all my life since the age of 5, 15 year old me wouldn't care so much about gameplay loops, mechanics, game design, the art style or the different systems that are in play. I was playing Call of Duty time and time again and even though each game is similar in terms of gameplay, the experience and playing with others for the time was so different because I didn't know much about the gaming world or what developers try to do with each design decision that they make and the result is just fun. No responsibilities, no worries, which by the way should always be the main consideration when playing games. If you're not having fun, there's no reason to continue playing. Being 24 years of age now, I have more knowledge about games, responsibilities and things to worry about. I'm very aware and conscious of what games to get nowadays, what red and green advice to look out for, the business practices and design decisions that are in play to make the game the way it is. When I see Ubisoft, I think of the Ubisoft formula almost instantly, designed for player retention and getting those radio towers, points of interest and completing side quests, time and time again before you can say that you've 100 percent of the game. Ubisoft I would argue is the epitome of what the op is talking about being guided to our destinations almost constantly with no sense of exploration for ourselves, losing that lost feeling almost instantly. There's plenty of good comments here and I want to highlight one comment in particular which is, you're not getting too old, you're just playing games that are made for the masses. And he's spot on, seeing that the AAA industry has fallen apart in the last decade with plenty of games coming out in half-baked, undercooked states and 
having to wait periods of time before the game gets fixed. This can also be said for AA games as well, but it really depends on the kind of game it is and the marketing that goes along with it. Remnant 2 was a game that I never expected to get 100k concurrent players on Steam, and that happened to be one of the highest play counts of 2023 because of its great marketing, using trailers and advertisements to get people aware of such a game. I say AA in particular because AA is typically mid-budget and usually doesn't get much marketing unless they have a big publisher behind their back, which in this game for Gunfire Games was Gearbox, a profitable publisher. Playing genres that people don't really play is another way of saying to try something different and see if you like it type of thing, with the commenter mentioning isometric RPGs as an example. I can relate to this with Baldur's Gate 3, which is a type of game that I don't typically play and before I knew it, within 3 days of playing, I'd already clocked in around 20 hours. Trying something new can make the difference between investing long periods of time and playing the same thing you've already played for short periods of time. Map markers have been quintessential in open world RPGs providing a sense of direction for the player while also taking note of points of interest and places you visit without needing to write it down anywhere. I believe this to be a pillar of getting lost because when certain games do not use markers, it can create entirely new experiences, ensuring that each player does something different as opposed to having them in-game, which can still create different but similar experiences. The two best examples I have come from the critically acclaimed Elder Scrolls series, which are Morrowind and Skyrim. Considered to be the pinnacle of the series, Morrowind is an open world RPG made by Bethesda Game Studios and is a true testament to freeform gaming, allowing you to explore and go about your adventure however you please with no limitations in the land of the Dark Elves. For its time, it was a major success, becoming Bethesda's biggest selling title at the time and garnered lots of praise for its incredible world building and role playing elements. However, should you decide to play it now and never played it back when it was first released, you'll notice that there are no map markers. Instead, you have to rely on an ever-growing journal, landmarks, and road signs, alongside asking NPCs for directions, and bar traveling was an option too, resorting to silk striders as a means of traveling to the major settlements. Notes are very important, so anything of interest, you either have to resort to pen and paper or simply remember it. What makes not having map markers in Morrowind so good is that Bethesda filled the world with so much content that even if you were to take a wrong turn, there'd always be something to explore or a new adventure to find giving players lots of opportunities and unexpected moments, making the overall experience more enjoyable and exciting. It's a shame that most open world games have come to accept map markers as the norm, and even though it's not a bad thing and provides plenty of upsides, the feeling of finding a random cave is gone and that becomes apparent with Bethesda's best selling game to date, Skyrim. Skyrim, for all the issues and re-releases it has, is one of the best RPGs of our time and it's easy to see why. Streamlined and simplified to perfection, while also having a Nordic setting and freaking dragons. 2011 me would be screaming if I heard dragons, and having an amazing modding scene that still to this day continues to be one of the best modding scenes I've ever seen. It's a goaded game with lots of stories and adventures to tell. Skyrim implements map markers that are not only used as transportation or fast travel, but are also shown on the compass the closer you get to a destination. So if there's something that's close to your vicinity, it'll show up in black as a small image and gets bigger as you get closer to it. The problem I have with map markers here is, as much as I love them, it's the over-reliance of them and I'll be honest, I rely on these a lot to help make my way through Skyrim. I wanted to showcase something from a mod I currently have which is Atlas Map Markers. Atlas Map Markers adds a bunch of new markers for players to explore but also blurs out all the markers on both your compass and the map, encouraging players to go out there and explore the world to find destinations. Now I had a choice here, either keep it the way it is or show all the markers on the map and compass, bringing myself back to the way Skyrim was intended. I opted to do the latter, because why bother changing something that I'm so accustomed to? I didn't want to use my brain to discover locations and figure out where I'm going, or where to go outside of questing. Regardless, I think that if Skyrim launched with no map markers, it'd play out a lot better because of how detailed the world is in this game too. There's lots of interesting locales and enough variety that there's always a new adventure waiting, even if it's just the same old Nordic or Duema Ruin. Open world RPGs also encourage you to go off the main path, albeit a main or story quest, and explore to see if you can find better gear, a new adventure, or a quest to do. When you first exit out of Helgen after surviving Alduin's attack, your first course of action is to head over to Riverwood and get familiar with the town, its inhabitants, and get started on the game. However, a few other options will appear on the compass, such as a dungeon or cave and a stone looking icon, which happens to be the Guardian Stones which improve a certain set of skills 20% faster such as magic, warrior, and thief skills. Or you can just skip all that entirely and head towards an entirely new direction, like up the northwest which houses Solitude, one of the game's many holds, 
or to the southeast, which houses Riften, another one of the game's holds. I've had a playthrough of Skyrim where all I did was side and faction content and save the main story to the very end. Another great example is The Witcher 3, which lets you pursue the game at your own pace, although, unlike Skyrim, there's level gates and places to consider where you should stay out of because you'll die quick, but it doesn't ruin the pacing nor the steering away too much to where it feels like you're going down a path similar to someone else. One last example I have for a more modern game, if you will, is Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a Souls-like game, and for those that don't know, Souls-like are incredibly difficult games that give you no sense of progression or hand-holding. In Elden Ring, you complete a short tutorial, kill your first boss, and once you're out of Limgrave, your adventure begins. No map markers, no additional UI. Just your character and a big world around you with one big map used to mark points of interest. What's interesting about Elden Ring though is that there is a sort of main path to follow where these yellow lines of grace guide you towards the direction you're supposed to be going in, but it doesn't function like GPS or navigation in other games and the map gets marked down until you explore the location, further encouraging players to see what's out there. Then you've got games like any Ubisoft game from 2012 onwards that has the same formula of do story, complete other activities, get stuff, find towers, get question marks and POIs to explore, rinse, repeat. They pretty much give everything to you on a silver platter and get you to do what you want. At least with Skyrim, you had to put the effort in to go to the locale and discover it. Witcher does what Ubi does in similar fashion, using notice boards to put up more places of interest in your map, and the sad thing is, the notice boards are shown to you on the map right away, which I guess was done to help speed things up, but I shouldn't try and use an excuse. Microtransactions have existed since the early 2000s, the one I can fondly remember being that stupid horse armor DLC from Oblivion where they sold this elven looking horse armor for almost 3 US dollars. Little did we know at the time that it would become prevalent by the 2010s with games implementing loot boxes and cosmetics. The one I fondly remember from that decade being Overwatch. Even though loot boxes were earned through gameplay, having an option to purchase them outright not only significantly reduced the grind to earn these, but also inspired a lot of other games to do so too, most notoriously being Star Wars Battlefront 2 which had to get an entire rework as a result of the community calculating how long it would take to get every item in the game. And the FIFA games, we've had ultimate team packs and gambling since FIFA 09, like, man, what the fuck? Not to mention they were getting billions of dollars off of it. Live service games are now the source of said MTX, selling packs, skins, and cosmetics for real money, all in hopes of supporting the game and keeping it funded for the foreseeable future. Other implementations of this have been pretty bad too, such as the paid Praxis kits in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Healy's credits in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and loot boxes giving orcs to help with the war effort in Shadow of War. Notice something here? All these games are single player and give some sort of advantage or a short way out, and paying for such things in a single player game is dumb and stupid, especially when it gives a pay to win advantage. At least Monolith Productions realized how dumb it was and removed it entirely, so that's a positive, but as for the others, Shame on you for putting such BS in there. Even though modern gaming is perfectly understandable and designed the way it is now, I can't help but fathom and miss the old generation of games where we use our brains to figure things out and not have it given to us like it is now. I get pretty excited whenever I decide to play an older generation game because I know what's expected of me and I embrace the jank, whatever it may be. And microtransactions. They definitely ruined gaming and we'll be better off without them for good so we can go back to the expansion era, but we all know that's not going to happen. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. This was a bit of a toss up video and a way of being open ended, so I hope you learned or got something out of it. Let me know in the comments what made you lose touch with modern gaming and how it's affecting what you play. And as always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.